Today we're going to be talking about why we gain weight. Hello legends and super legends, welcome to Velo Harmony. In following up the video about how to lose weight healthily, it dawned on me that a lot of people talk about losing weight, but nobody ever talks about why we gain weight. And it may seem obvious, but there are other factors that we may be unaware of that are kind of subtle and just in our subconscious. And I wanted to address that today. So let's get right into it. I decided to use this approach to talk about this, uh, why we gain weight, because this will fit right into the series of videos I'm going to be developing about how to lose weight. We already talked about losing weight healthily. I'm going to be talking about binge eating and other things. I've gotten a lot of suggestions from uh, different members of the community that I'm going to try to sequence everything to where it's going to make more sense. So I decided to back up and talk about why we gain weight using the movie, The Matrix Revolutions. There was a character in The Matrix Revolutions, a Frenchman, that um, Neo and Morpheus and Trinity went to to find the key maker. And he started to talk about cause and effect. So those of you who are Matrix fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if you're not, it's going to make sense in a little bit. There is a cause and effect for everything in life that we do. For example, the cause and effect of increasing your calories, that's a cause. The effect of increasing your calories leads to increased weight. What's the remedy? Usually you can increase your physical activity. And the reason I said usually is because our lifestyles has changed. So we gain weight because of lifestyles. And that's what this video will lead into the next video that's going to be coming because you're going to lose weight by changing lifestyle. I don't like to focus on, you know, counting calories. I mean, who's got time for that? Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So let's focus on why we gain weight. So increase calories, you gain weight. We all know that. Increase stress. Now, increase stress. The sources of stress can vary. It can be stress from home, it can be stress from work or whatever other factors. What ends up happening, I put in the middle here what we call, people use the phrase comfort food. I don't like that phrase, that's why I put those little things around it. We need to eliminate it from our vocabulary. Seek your comfort somewhere else. Get a hug, I don't care. Get a blanket. Food is not something you should be using for comfort. That's not a healthy relationship with food. Food should be utility. You're hungry, you eat. Food is one of the pleasures of life. When you eat really good food, the taste, the flavors, that's pleasure. That's enjoying the gifts that God has put down here for us to enjoy. But we end up seeking food to fulfill other purposes. And since it can't do that, you end up going for more because you're never satisfied. Food is not going to comfort you. So you keep eating more. That's how you gain weight. Instead of this remedy of using your bodies more because we have foragers. We were meant back in the day, we were meant to go spend the day walking around, picking berries, hunting rabbits, antelopes, whatever. We were meant to use our bodies, gather food, and then bring it and eat. But we don't gather food anymore. We sit in a cubicle all day. And down here where you see the movie Office Space, those of you who have watched that movie, there's a scene in there that stays with me. When the guy says, the main character, he says, human beings were not meant to sit in a cubicle for eight hours a day. Who came up with that? Eight hours a day. The day has 24. You sleep, let's say eight. There's only 16 left. And you're sitting in a cubicle for eight. You got to commute. So if your commute is an hour and a half or two in most major cities, say so you're driving like Houston, most people drive two to three hours, sometimes one way. So that's six hours. You only got two hours for yourself. Who came up with that idea? Then you're doing it five days a week, sometimes more. They want you to work weekends and stuff. That's what leads to stress, especially if it's a job that you hate. I don't know if I even put that on there. Yeah, I put it right here. Excessive hours at work during a job you hate. If you love what you're doing, 
we tend to refer to it as a labor of love. It's a different kind of feel. It's a different kind of dynamic when you're doing something that you're creating and you're involved. You know, you, you don't show up at work and all of a sudden the policies have changed. You had no input. You had no participation in it, but it's going to cause you to work longer hours. That creates a problem. I used to be a consultant. We, I used to do uh, consulting for Oracle Consulting Software, business software. And we'd show up and we were the enemy because the people working had no input in the decision of that company to purchase that software. And that software required time from those people to learn how to use it. It was not user friendly. So it was like a project of attrition. Everybody hated you. They didn't, they didn't like working late or whatever. And you could tell when the project was over, it was almost like what I talked about when you go to a, a big ride or a big race. Everybody's nervous and then afterwards they're, they're, they're friendlier and happier. Same thing. When the project was over and they realized I'll be able to do my job right because there, there was a lot of anxiety. Is this software going to make me look bad? Am I going to be able to get the reports I always get? Because that's usually when you get a new software, they come with different reports or they don't have what you currently have. Anytime there's a change, you might lose something or get it somewhere else and you got to go look for it. So those are the kind of things that create stresses when you have no input. And if you have a crappy boss who continually changes stuff with no care as to its impact on you, that causes stress. And how do we medicate? Some people medicate with food. Some people start drinking, drugs, whatever, to make that pain go, go away. Thankfully, some people start, they, they, they use a remedy of physical activity. What I'm going through is to show the sources of how you can gain weight. Because sometimes you're not aware of it. The job stresses you out. You seek comfort in food. But then the job continues to stress you out. You continue to seek comfort in food, but you're really not comforted. And the same thing, if you drink a lot because the stress that you're trying to numb, then you end up actually depending on that drug because you got to drink more the next time and so forth and so on. So what I'm trying to get to is that because there are different factors that cause us to, and I even got depression down here. When you're depressed, you have a tendency to sleep more or whatever. And some people don't even know they're depressed. They just feel blah. They have lack of energy, don't feel like doing anything. And sometimes they can't explain why. And different things can cause depression. It can be something, something that happened in your life. You had a loss in the family or somebody close to you. You know, all of that can trigger that. And you're not really aware until it really has snowballed. But you end up having reduced physical activity. You end up eating more. So I put over here as far as the remedy where we talk about cause and effect. This is the effect of the cause of depression. Some of them anyway, that's not all the effects. You want to find the source of the depression when it's identified. Some people don't identify it and they just live with depression. You know, some people even after it's identified, they have medicines that you can take, but sometimes it still doesn't work for everybody. I mean, recently you guys have heard about some famous people like Kate Spade. And uh, this guy, Anthony Bourdain, that really shocked me because I watched that program. I'm a fan. This guy looked like he loved life. I love how he could go all over the world, all countries, all levels of income, wealth, whatever. And he had a rapport with everyone. He just made everyone feel worth something. And I just love that about him. He, he, he ate some stuff that would make my stomach turn, but just the idea that he could get those people to just open up and invite him like he was a part of their culture. It just did something to me. I mean, I still watch the program because it's still showing some of the stuff he had in the queue, but I was very shocked because he was the last person I thought would take his life. So you never really know. So the, the, the thing here is, it's not so much whether you're cycling or running or whatever, you really have to step back sometimes and look at, okay, do I really need that summer house? Do I really need that boat? Do I really need that third or fourth car? And the reason I'm, doing, I'm, I'm going that route right now is that the reason we put up with these jobs that we hate is because we have all this stuff we think we, we need and we have to keep working because we've charged or gotten into contracts to get stuff. Stuff, and we got to keep working to pay for it. And as soon as you pay for that, you want something else. The reason you want more stuff is because whatever is going on with you, you're not satisfied. Because if you're satisfied, you don't want more. 
you know, so I think it's something that I wanted to put in there so a lot of you watching this video can kind of sit back and say, yeah, you know, I really have to rethink because one thing I always tell my kids is money doesn't go bad. If you don't spend it, you don't need to refrigerate it. It's not going to go bad. So it's okay not to spend it. You know, I've been through the phase of spending to the point where I'm sick of spending. I've been through that in the phases of my life as well. And I'm just at the stage where I only buy what is necessary. Because in the longer scheme of things, if you had all the money in the world, where would you put all the stuff that you buy? You'd have to go pay for somewhere to store them. So to reevaluate the cycle and the, the point I'm trying to get to is that we gain weight because of the, the lifestyle we have. So you may have a lot of stuff. You may be making a lot of money, but you got no time to live. So it makes you miserable. You're not really happy. Even though you get money doesn't make you happy. It's the relationships that you have with activities and people that make you happy. And if you're not able to do that, you will continue to be unhappy. So, yeah, you'll be going to work, making a lot of money. You'll be eating poorly because you're always gone, always rushing. Like I see people eating in a car. I feel sorry for them. Go to a cafe. What the hell eating? What kind of life you have? You don't have time to eat. I mean, come on, man. Let's be real. You know, so if you're one of them, it's time to reevaluate. You should be able to sit down. I don't care if you're sitting down at a park bench. You should be able to sit down and eat, have a meal. You shouldn't have to be gulping down food in your car. It's time to reevaluate. Maybe you're too far from that job as far as where you live. Or maybe you need to find a job closer to you. You know, I'm, the city I live in in Houston, people, I mean, it's not uncommon for people to commute two plus hours one way. That's a big chunk of your day. And that's why they're fighting each other on the roads. They're miserable. So when you hear road rage, they might as well call it misery. That's where it comes from. It's got nothing to do with the other guy or the other person or the cyclist or the person on their rollerblade. That person is unhappy and miserable. I mean, why do you feel the need to rush everywhere? That's because you have not made the right choices for you. You know, it's not that important. If something were to happen to your health, that company will replace you like that. So don't give up your life for these things. I mean, it's not worth it. Let's come back to this. So cause and effect. We gain weight because we are consuming more calories for whatever reason, whatever we're trying to medicate with the food. And that's a bad relationship. Look at food as a utility. I need to eat. I eat. When I'm done, you move on. I'll use an analogy. Some people go to the mall and they shop even when they don't need stuff. That's another unhealthy relationship. I shop when I have a need. I have a list. I could get what I need. I come on and go do other things. Some people treat it as a social thing. And that's okay if that, if that works for you and it makes you happy. But I wanted to use that analogy. It's the relationship we have with food that causes us to gain weight. We think that the food will fill a void that we have. So we, you have to go back now and say, okay. Before you even start thinking, I want to lose weight, because what's going to end up happening is a lot of people notice that they've gained weight, but it's happened over a period of time. But they have not identified the cause or the causes. They just see the effect. You know, I have my clothes don't fit well. I look funny. I got a belly. I got this, whatever. Something caused it. So until you go back to say, OK, my job was stressing me out. What about that job is stressing you out? It, do you have a jerk of a boss who's just not listening to you? Do you think it will ever change? If you don't think it will ever change, yeah, my suggestion would be you, you start increasing your physical activity, but you deal with that source. You deal with that cause, meaning find a new job, uh, pay off the debts of the things you have so you don't have to depend on that job. Because when you're looking for a new job, if you don't need it, you, you come across differently. I always found the best jobs when I didn't need it. You guys know what I mean. People can sense the urgency or the, the level of desperation <laughs> when, when, you're, when you're dealing with it. If you're making a deal or you're putting a contract together, making a deal with, a, with another person for whatever reason, and you got other deals, it's a different kind of rapport, a different kind of swagger. Let's, let's put it that way, that you have. You know, so... Always go back to find out what's going on with me that, that's causing me to feel blah. What's going on? You know, like this week, I'll use me for an example. 
I haven't ridden a bike. This is Friday. I've been off the bike all week. I've been uh, working on the website, you know, doing a lot of technical stuff, which I wanted to do. But I knew this was a rest week. Now, normally in a rest week, I would ride every other day. By the time I would get through my office work, because normally I would ride at lunch. It was raining all week in Houston this week. Normally I would ride at lunch. I had no desire to get on the trainer. I had no desire to go outside, even when there were pockets of dry, you know, in the weather. I did not want to ride. And I knew that I've been riding for almost seven weeks since my last block of training. And last week, as you all who watched the video know, the group ride, I increased my mileage. The last week of a block, I, I, I increased my mileage. I always do that. So I knew I needed to detune and let my body soak it up. Today's Friday, I feel great. I will get on a trainer later on today and just spin for maybe 30 minutes. No gadgets, no nothing, just spin. You know, I always use that to check my shoes, make sure the cleat didn't come loose, whatever shoe I'm gonna use. That's what I'm talking about. What I'm driving at is you need to make sure that you know the cause of what's, what's going on with you. So if you're gaining weight, back up. Why am I gaining weight? If you're just eating more because you like to eat, that's the cause. So that's okay. Then you increase your physical activity. If you're eating more because you're stressed, find the source of your stress. Where is it coming from? It's not always the job. It might be at home. Maybe you hook up with a chick that's stressing you out. Maybe it's time to have a talk with that chick. And maybe at some point you might have to cut or lose. I don't know. But what I'm saying is when you identify the source, you can handle the effect more. Because once you identify the source, you still got to work out. You still got to increase your physical activity to drop the weight. But it becomes more of a lifestyle change. And we'll lead into, I will do another video about that because this is not enough time to cover, cover that. So then we'll, it will eliminate your need for treating food as a comfort. You know, people use that as supposed to be something good. I hate to hear that. You don't get comfort from food. You want comfort? Go get a hug. Get a blanket. You know, and then if you're depressed, these are not the only causes. I just listed three things, but the, the process I'm trying to lay down for everybody that watches this video is take your time and be honest with yourself and find out why do I feel that I need to eat when I'm not hungry? Or am I going to McDonald's and buying their burger and then two hours later I'm hungry? I used to experience that when I was in college. I go to McDonald's, buy a burger. Two hours later, I'm hungry. I'm like, because the nutrients were not there that my body needed. So that means you're eating the wrong foods. If you're eating the wrong foods, that's the cause. Because by eating the wrong food, your body's saying, I didn't get anything to feed my cells. You still didn't give me the vitamins and nutrients that I need. So you need to eat better foods. Nobody's saying don't grab a burger now and then from McDonald's. Maybe get a burger from a restaurant where they use the best beef and they have better ingredients, it might satisfy you more than that burger that they say they have. I don't patronize them. They're not even on my list as a restaurant, you know. So that was just a process to identify the source. So there's a reason why things happen to each of us. All of you watching this video know. Be honest with yourself. If you don't identify that source, you can work out that you're crazy. It will still be a cycle where you won't feel like you're losing weight because you'll exercise and still be eating too much. The cause is still there. Identify the cause. A relationship with food goes a long way into how you treat food, meaning that if it's something you're doing to mask another problem, it becomes an addiction, just like any other drug. So you don't want that kind of a relationship. If you're not hungry, why are you eating? Eat when you're hungry and eat the best stuff. Eat food that will make you satisfied. Do not eat foods that you're not craving. It may seem weird. The reason you're craving a certain food is because you have a nutrient that's lacking and your body's telling you, I feel like peanuts or whatever. You eat that. You know, we'll, we'll get into that when I do the video on binging. I've kind of grouped these in a, in a manner. But I wanted to go back and just to wrap up here and say that there is a cause and effect. I use the matrix revolution because that kind of stuck in my mind. Everything you do is caused by something and it has an effect. So when you notice that you're overweight, something caused to go back because that's the effect. Go back, reevaluate. What have I done over whatever period of time? In other words, look at your whole journey, your lifestyle. 
Don't start starving yourself, fasting on this. You know, I, I, I see people posting, oh, I fasted while I was on this ride. That doesn't make any sense. That's like saying I drove my car with no gas. What the hell are you fasting for? You've been eating all this time to gain the weight. You need to exercise and burn the weight. Why are you depriving your body? Fasting doesn't work. You may temporarily drop the weight, but your body will still tell you you're messing with your metabolism when you fast. That's not healthy. You need metabolism to be consistent. Consistency comes from exercise, whatever routine you're going to get into, whether you want to go running or swimming or whatever, you still need to eat to have the energy to do that. You can't exercise on an empty stomach. That's not a good idea. You won't really perform very well anyway. So yeah, you can go out and walk and say, oh, I'm not going to eat for, for, for an hour. But when you come back, you will eat more. You will make it up. So you're just fooling yourself. And then stop weighing yourself every day. Do it once a week. Every Sunday, at the same time, after you go to the bathroom, wait and compare your weight week to week. Because you weren't weighing yourself every day when you were gaining weight. So why are you weighing yourself every day? Because you're trying to lose it. It just drives you nuts. I'm going to end it there, but that is why we gain weight. It's not all the reasons, but it's a process. Something causes you to eat more and you gain weight, whether it's a bad habit, whatever else. That's why. And so you need to look at that. Once you identify that cause and you change your lifestyle, then you have a lasting weight loss plan. Okay? With that, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. And we're going to have more videos in the series coming up. Get those K's in.